it's Lindsay, welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing part one of my bookshelf tour. So I've been promising you guys a bookshelf tour for a few weeks now. It's in celebration of the fact that I hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. So yeah, we're going to do part one today and then look out for part two going up on my channel on Friday. Um, I did the bookshelf book tag a couple of weeks ago now where I gave you an overview of my bookshelves and I talked about what kind of shelves they were and how I organised my books. So I'm not going to talk about that at all here. Um, if you want to go and watch that then I will leave a link to it up here and in the description box down below. Um, so you can press pause on this video perhaps and then go and watch that one first, it's obviously totally up to you. Um, I'm going to start with the shelf that I've got downstairs in the living room and then I'm going to come back upstairs again. And I'm not going to pull out every single book on my shelf. I'm going to give you an overview of the shelf and sort of talk through a few of my favourites on there. Just a few things that jump out at me, basically. So if you have any questions about any of the books that I don't mention, then please leave them in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. So let's jump into the bookshelf tour. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. It's taken me a while to kind of figure out how to set the camera up so you can see the shelves properly but this um top shelf that we have here and i'm going to apologize if if i'm putting my hand right in front of the screen but um i can't quite see the picture because it's i've not yeah i've not got access to the bit of the camera that shows me the picture but anyway um, this um top shelf down here i think i've explained before that these um shelves that we have in the living room are like what we call our series shelves or our display shelves so i have all my harry potter um, books or no some of my Harry Potter books at the top here so this set here what is the adult set um the adult hardback set that my mum bought me I think either for my birthday or for Christmas one year it was quite a few years ago now um I obviously have books one to four in the new paperback series um I need to get the other three I have over here the um some of the illustrated editions and some of the um a couple of the uh, non-fiction sort of textbooks, they're not textbooks, but you know what I mean, um, from the um, Harry Potter, the History of Magic exhibition, and then the wand collection book, book that I uh, bought uh, a couple of months ago, I think. Um, I don't have any of the house editions yet, and I do really want to get some of those, but um, alas, we'll have to wait for that one. Okay, so this is the second shelf down, and as you can see, I have some more Harry Potter books up here. These are the as you know, the original hardbacks and paperbacks. I don't have a full set of either, um, and I really would like to uh, get a full set of them, but um, I'm sure some of you are aware that um, some of the original first edition um, hardbacks and paperbacks are quite expensive um, to, to buy or quite difficult to get your hands on. So I will add to that eventually hopefully. Um, and then the rest of this shelf are uh, my, our Sarah J Mass books, so again from the series, this is the Throne of Glass series and this is the Court of Thrones and Roses series. Um, we do really like Sarah J Mass. Um, she seems to have drawn this series out a little bit, I don't know, that's kind of what we've been thinking lately, uh, but there we go. Um, and this up here is a book that my colleague lent me quite a while ago now, and I still haven't got around to reading it. So um, we'll have to do that soon. This is the third shelf, and this is basically my husband's uh, Robin Hobb shelf. So there's every book in the, what's it called? The Realm of the Elderlings series. Um, and he's read every single one apart from, this one, which is, um, I believe, a collection of short stories that are not set in the world. I think that's right. Um, so, yeah, we actually went to um, see Robin Hobb at a shop in London, which I can't remember the name of now. And uh, my husband bought this particular edition. So this is the 20th anniversary edition of Assassin's Apprentice. Um, and uh, it was because she was publishing... Um, this, which was the last book in the last trilogy, which I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Book three of the Fits in the Four. I mean, this is just a, an absolutely stunning book, and she signed both of them for him. And um, yeah, I think he was in awe of those. But um, I've read book one um, 
in the first trilogy, Assassin's Apprentice, I'm not sure whether I'm going to continue. It's quite an investment and I don't really like a lot of epic fantasy. I did like Assassin's Apprentice, but yeah, I'm just not overly sure about continuing. So there's that one. Okay, this is the fourth shelf down. We've got a few little um, knickknacks on here. So um, these two are both... Um, Lego sets that I put together a couple of years ago now ba um, based on the latest Star Wars uh, or the, the new, the first new Star Wars movie which I can't remember off the, the name of off the top of my head I was actually quite like um, building Lego um, I don't know, it just, it's something it's just, just fun, it's just something to do with your hands when you're like watching TV or something like that it's a bit like crocheting or knitting and that kind of stuff I suppose um, then we've got all of the um, Game of Thrones books um, and then this one I'm going to have to reach, I'm in the wrong position this one here is I believe um, based the century before Game of Thrones starts but it's based, like gives you a bit of history on one of the families in there. Um, then we have um, the Patrick Rothfuss series, um, the Name of the Wind series. I bought this edition of the Name of the Wind for my husband for his, for Christmas I think or for his birthday this year. It's um, the 10th anniversary of Deluxe Illustrated Edition so um, that's really really lovely. I'm waiting for him to announce when he's going to publish the third book um, and neither Stefan or I are holding our breaths. Um, so then we've got some Brandon Sanderson books again these are my husband's ones and um, we're missing book one in the Mistborn trilogy because um, my husband's lent that out to somebody and then we've got a box set of the Lord of the Rings books there um, I've got the Return of the King on my uh, as an audio book on my phone to listen to next um, so I can finally finish reading that trilogy okay this is the fifth shelf down. The lighting is uh, starting to get a little bit darker down here, but there's I can't put the camera settings any uh, lighter, so um, yeah, apologies for that. So we have all of the... Um, is it The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini? I started reading Eragon oh, about four or five years ago now, um, and I was quite enjoying it, but then I never finished it. I put it down and read something else, but my husband's read all of them, and he... He really, really likes them. Um, we've got the Black, uh, the Brent Weeks Lightbringer series, uh, books one to four, and then we've got my Twilight books over there. Um, I will forever have a soft spot in my heart for the Twilight books. I know pe a lot of people on BookTube don't like them, but you know they they're one of the series that got me excited about reading again. Not that I've ever been bored by reading, but it was this particular time in my life when I think probably around university when I was maybe a little bit frustrated with reading because I was reading a lot of stuff for uni and I always say that when I went to university I was far too young to go to university I just didn't appreciate it as much as I could have done I um, obviously I got a lot out of it but um, I think I get a lot more out of it now but yeah they kind of like broke all of that stuff up and actually I found in a charity shop um, this which is the official illustrated guide to the Twilight Saga um, and it has lots of pictures in it and stuff like that so um, I should have included that in my August book haul actually and I didn't so whoops right and this is the very bottom shelf of that bookcase so we have all of my Joe Nesbo books um, I own pretty much every book that Joe Nesbo has written and then it's been translated into English uh, the four that you can't see up there are actually I'm using actually using them to prop the camera up at the moment because I um, can't use my tripod because it's a bit too close to the floor basically so yeah I have pretty much all of his books I've really enjoyed the Harry Hole series so it starts with um, the bat um, and I, I didn't read the bat first because when they when they were publishing them in the UK when they were translating them into English they translated them in a bit of a different order they didn't start with this one I think they started with what did they start with I must have read the devil's star for, I can't remember anyway I didn't start with the bat um, and these are not actually in order it should go the bat and then cockroaches so let's just rectify that um, and then it goes on from there and I can't I don't know I can't remember if these are in the, the correct order 
Um, these two on the end are more sort of like standalone um, stuff that he's done. Um, I didn't enjoy those as much as I've enjoyed the Harry Hole series. Um, yes, yeah, so if you like crime um, or you like Nordic writing, then um, I would definitely give that series a go. Then I've got my um, Lunar Chronicle series. I've read everything apart from Winter. I don't have the two short story collections. Um, I think I'm going to wait until I've read Winter to pick those up. Um, but that's a really good sort of sci-fi fairy tale retelling series um really good fun i've got the daughter of smoke and bone series by laney taylor i found all three of those in, in um a couple of different charity shops um, and they're in like really good condition so that was a, a a bargain i haven't read them yet uh, my husband has he said that they were quite good but he enjoys her strange the dreamer he thought that that was um a lot better than um than the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. Um, so yeah, there's a little recommendation for you. And then at the end there, we've got all of our um, Philip Pullman books, um, or the ones that relate to the um, the His Dark Materials trilogy. So um, yeah, I suppose I should really put the newest one because we do have a special edition here of the Book of Dust. This was, um, I've not even taken it out of the plastic. This was a, like Waterstones exclusive, exclusive edition um, in a slipcase. It's signed by Philip Pullman. It's numbered. Um, so yeah, I didn't. I don't want to take it out of the plastic, but um, yeah. So I should really bring the book of dust down here. But as you can see, these shelves are pretty full, so um, I don't want to overly clutter them. But there's that. Forgot to mention as well, bought this edition of um, the Amber Spyglass from Abe Books. And this is a signed, I think, first edition of it. Let me just have a little look. Yep, yeah, it's a signed first edition um, copy of it. There's a quote from the Amber Spyglass that we, um, well, there's like a, um, a reading from it that we um, had read out at our wedding. Um, that really means a lot to us and um, so we wanted to get a special edition of that. The irony being that I've only ever read Northern Lights, I've not read The Subtle Knife or The Amber Spyglass um, and we talked about getting a line of that tattooed, so I have half and Stefan has half but um, it doesn't really make sense for me to do that until I've read it, I don't know. Um, let, me, let me know what you guys think of that. So I wanted to show you um, the very top of my shelves. We're back in the reading room by the way. Um, but I'm having to hold my camera tripod because I can't find anything tall enough to balance it on. So I keep all of my children's books up here. So I've got my Royal Doll collection. There's a load of Michael Morpurgo books that I think they came out of the set and a few other bits and pieces. Um, I've mentioned a few times on my channel that The Secret Garden is one of my favourite children's books. Um, so, yeah, and then just to the side of that, I have um, two books that I bought in university. So we had The Complete Works of Shakespeare and um, Shakespeare's Words by David Crystal and Ben Crystal. Um, I found, my mum gave me a box of stuff from her house, the very last box that she had in her loft. Um, of my stuff and they were in there and I I want to keep them and display them but I don't want to put them on my actual shelves so they're living there so that's that one okay and then we're on to the first shelf of the first bookcase up here so um, I mentioned before that um, this is the start of the fiction section and they are in alphabetical order so couple just to kind of point out um, I have a hardback edition of Purple Hibiscus here. Absolutely love this. It's really, really beautiful. And um, this is my favourite of her novels. Um, but I still haven't finished Half of a Yellow Sun yet, so we'll have to see how I feel about that. Um, what else to note on here? Obviously, I have all of Becky Albertelli's books. I've only read Simon so far. Then we've got The Power, which obviously won the Women's Prize um, last year. They're a bit tangled up. Um, I really, really liked um, Monica Alley's Brick Lane. This is a story about a woman who moves over. Is it from Pakistan? Let's just have a little look. Was it from? No, it's from Bangladesh. Um, and she marries somebody in Britain, and um, she moves to effectively the East End of London, and obviously has to um, deal with life 
I'm over here in a husband that isn't particularly um, it's not particularly great being married to him so I would definitely recommend that one um, yeah great book uh, got my Jane Austen books up here a couple that I haven't added yet from my recent book haul and then here's the start of my Linwood Barclay books I've talked about Linwood Barclay in a thriller recommendations video um, they're probably not as good as what I thought they first were when I first started reading them um, but again a bit like the Twilight series they've got like this special place in my heart I suppose um, because yeah they were the sort of books that would com completely draw me in and um, couldn't stop reading them basically so I've still got a few of his um, new ones. I'll show you those on the uh, on the next shelf down so we've got the second shelf down now I have a couple sort of like ornamental things on here these are a couple of sort of like fake succulents or something I don't know I think I got them in Sainsbury's or Nets one of the two um, I sometimes use those in my Instagram pictures um, but I like decorating my shelf with them as well um, we've got the continuation of my Linwood Barclay books um, this one I actually have signed um, Linwood Barclay was in Waterstones in Colchester I think a couple of years ago now um, signing these when this first came out but it was during the day when I was at work um, and so I couldn't go but um, I managed to pick one up when I went in Waterstones the next time I was there um, so that's really cool um, yeah what else is on here I've got my, one of my great one of my five star reads from so at the end of last year yeah the last days of Cafe Layla absolutely love that book would really recommend it um, another book that I've really enjoyed this year is um, Starfish by Akimi Dawn Bowman. This is a YA contemporary book following a, uh, a girl who has anxiety and it is very, very good. I'm really related to the main character um, and that's one of the things that makes books great is that we can um, see ourselves in the characters. So um, yeah, we definitely recommend that one. Next shelf down, we've got the um, the Natural History of Dragon series by Marie uh, Brennan. I haven't read any of these, but my husband really, really liked them. So they are on my TBR. Some of his books aren't on my TBR, but these ones are. They, they look really pretty um, on the shelf like that. Um, have all of Dan Brown's novels here. Um, again, he, well, apart from Origin, which I'm currently reading, that's why it's not on the shelf. Um, he, again, holds a special place in my heart just because I read The Da Vinci Code, I think, in my first or my second year of university. And again, like I was saying with the um, Twilight books, it was kind of like a break from all of the quite um, dense literary stuff that I was reading for uni. And I remember reading The Da Vinci Code and just being absolutely blown away by some of the ideas that were in there. And, um, I remember giving it to my mum um, afterwards and saying you have to read this because I need to talk to somebody about it basically um, so yeah I've continued to buy his books um, and really like them they're just good sort of mystery what do you call them like mystery novels I suppose yeah um, so they're really good um, for, I've got both of Jesse Burton's books there I haven't read either of those um, there's Jen Campbell's book there beginning of the world in the middle of the night um, I got this for Christmas I haven't yet read it um, it's, it's short so I have to really put it on my TBR soon uh, but it's just an absolutely stunning naked hardback you can buy this in paperback now as well which is quite which is very good and then a couple of Joanna Cannon's books um, this is the next shelf down we've got the whole of the selection series here so it starts with the selection um, by Kira Cass this is a really good YA um, dystopian series dystopian which I don't really know um, I suppose dystopian um, uh, I really like that series um, all of the books in Sebastian D. Castell's adult fantasy series that have been published so far I haven't read any of these I'm not going to but my husband really really likes this series um, he says it's really well written I've um, got a couple of Becky Chambers books, I haven't read those either, this is going to be a theme throughout this bookshelf tour so just be warned about that. Um, I've read Tracy Chevalier's um, New Boy last year, I think during the Booktubeathon and um, I really liked that one. This is a retelling of Othello set in a sort of primary school or elementary school 
uh, playground basically um, and it was really good uh, so that made me read, want to read more of her books and I've just picked up The Girl with the Pearl Earring um, which I'm quite looking forward to giving a go. Uh, next shelf down we've got some of um, Cinder Williams Chimer books um, that's a continuation from the shelf above again my husband has read all of these can't get these much in UK bookshops so we've had to order them from Amazon um, but she's a really good I don't know whether it's YA or adult fantasy I want to say YA but I'm not overly sure um, I look quite a lot of Cassandra Clare's uh, Mortal Instruments books I have read um, book one City of Bones uh, but I haven't continued on I've sort of been slowly collecting those uh, one of my absolute favourites, uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This is a signed edition of it um, that we bought in Forbidden Planet. And it is actually signed on the book itself. Um, uh, those of you that watched my book haul last week will know that I find it irritating when they say that a book is signed and then it's signed on a book plate. It's not quite the same thing. Uh, this is uh, What a Carve Up by Jonathan Co. Um, up until recently, and probably still even now, if people ask me what my favourite book was, I'd probably say this. Uh, this is a book I read in university as part of my like university reading, and it's, it's a satirical book looking at um, modern politics, I think in the 90s, and it's, um, it's very good. I really should reread it, because again, just when I tell people it's my favourite, um, the details are quite fuzzy for it now, so um, I'd like to go back to it. There's that one. Um, we've got obviously got the Hunger Games books. I finally have a complete collection of those. I've been missing the first book for ages because somebody borrowed it and didn't get it back. Um, and that's that shelf. Um, and this is a very bottom shelf. I tell you what, my knees are not hurting me sitting down here. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We do these things. Um, yeah, this is the um, bottom shelf. So a couple of books. A um, couple of books I'll mention on here, obviously I've talked quite a lot on my channel about um, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, it's a really good th sort of science fiction thriller, um, yeah absolutely fantastic, would definitely recommend that. Um, another one of my favourites on this shelf is um, of course Room by Emma Donoghue, this is a hardback edition, I think I've had this since it came out. I think so anyway, it's, it's a little bit um, damaged in a couple of places but it's the first book, it's the first edition that I bought of it um, so um, yeah, really really a good book about a mother and a boy and the boy is I think something like five and they're, they live in room and the story is told from a five year old boy's perspective um, it's all about this room that they live in and the story goes from there, it's just absolutely fantastic really really great writing, really clever uh, would definitely recommend that. Um, and then there's lots of books on this shelf that I haven't read. We've got the um, Sebastian Falks trilogy. I've read Birdsong, really, really liked that, um, but I haven't read the other two. Don't know whether it's worth doing that. Uh, we've got the Crimson Petal of the White and the White there uh, by Michelle Faber. That's one of my bookshiper recommends book picks, um, but I haven't I haven't read that so far this year, but. Hopefully we'll get around to doing that. I uh, talk quite a lot on my channel as well about the Roanoke, Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. Another very, very good thriller um, that's about this family called the Roanoke family. Um, and one of the girls has been living away from the house for, for years and then she has to go back when she gets a phone call to say that her cousin is missing. Um, she revisits the house again and her family and, and the story goes from there. It's, it's very dark. Um, there's some quite... Um, triggering themes in there but it's very good. Right we're back on the top shelf of the second bookcase. Um, I have all of my Gillian Flynn books up here. really really love Gillian Flynn as a writer. would recommend everything that she's written and I just I need to know when she's writing something else. Out of all of these I would say um, Dark Places is my favourite. This is about a young woman who, when she was younger, I want to say something like 10 or 11, um, her family was murdered and her brother is currently in prison, well he is, he's in prison for it, and um, she helped to put him there with her evidence and she's obviously tried to forget about it over the years and then at the beginning of the book this group come to her who are like um, a group that that look at murders as a 
um, people that are in prison as a bit of a hobby. I can't remember the exact nature of the group, but they're asking, they want to interview her basically, and it all brings it back again. Uh, very good, very dark, as the title suggests, uh, but um, I loved it. Um, and then I've got a couple of um, Ken Follett's books. I read The Pillars of the Earth earlier this year, and then World Without End is the um, sequel to that one. Um, as you can see it's a little bit bigger than Pillars of the Earth and the Pillars of the Earth is chunky enough as it is. So um, yeah, this is um, a book that I've mentioned on my channel recently, I can't remember what video that was in. Uh, the Women's Room by Marilyn French, it's the first um, feminist novel that I read and I really really liked it so um, I would definitely recommend that one again something that I'd like to go back to and reread. The second shelf down, I've, again I've got a couple of um, sort of flowery things on there and um, this was from Christmas and I think this is real because um, I've got a feeling it's real because I think it's dead but um, it's been there since November last year and I mean it doesn't look too bad so I don't know <laughs> um, and then this is what it's something that you may have seen in my Instagram pictures as well if you're not following me on Instagram or you want to have a little look I will um, I always leave a link to that in the description box so you can go and check that out um, a few things on here that I'll pull out. I just recently read um, An Untamed State by Roxane Gay and I've really, really liked it. It's about a woman who um, is visiting Haiti where, where, where her parents live and she's with her husband and her baby and um, one day they decide to go out. This is right at the beginning of the book and it's not a spoiler because it's on the back and she is kidnapped. Uh, by some men and uh, hell for ransom and it's about her experience while she's kidnapped and um, and afterwards as well it's again very very dark um, difficult to read so that's a bit of a theme with some of my favourite books actually um, but uh, very very well written um, I also really liked um, this next book that's next to it Still Alice by Lisa Genova this is about a uh, woman who develops dementia and I think she's in her 40s so it's a particular type of dementia and it's about how that dementia develops and it's told from her point of view so each chapter you see the journey from when she's diagnosed um, to and how the dementia is developing and how that's affecting her and it's really well written because Lisa Genova she she includes she writes it like she's got dementia, do you know, I, you know what I'm trying to say? And um, Lisa Genova is, I believe, some sort of a professor in... Um, I, what, what is it? Let me just have a little look. She is... I can't remember it, it doesn't say in the book, but I think she... Um, knows a lot about dementia because she that's like her field of study um as far as i remember i could be slightly wrong about that so i do apologize but um yeah i i do know that she's written this from it, her knowledge and experience in that particular field uh, so very very good really liked that one um we've of course got a copy of the mermaid and mrs hancock which i read early this year and liked a few of john green's books i got rid of paper towns because i didn't like that very much um, I, I was one of these people that sort of collected everything that a writer had written but now space wise I can't afford to keep everything on here so if I don't like something or I wasn't a particularly big fan of it then I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be donating it so um, yeah that went um, and I, I've read The Fort Now Stars and I, I quite liked that but I haven't read the other ones on there so yeah we'll see how we get on with those ones. Next shelf down um, one of my favourites on this shelf is um, Home Going by Yar Jassy. Um, it's a bit of a booktube darling so I'm sure you know what it's all about. Um, I've heard that this is very good on audio so I've added this to my Audible wish list um, because I would like to reread it so giving it a go on Audible uh, will be, I think that's a good plan so I definitely plan on rereading that. Uh, I've got all of Mohsin Hamid's books. I've read everything apart from Moth Smoke. Uh, probably my favourite out of them is The Reluctant Fundamentalist. And that's a very, very good book. Um, and it starts in a cafe. Um, it's two people having a conversation in a cafe. Um, and it sort of goes on from there. It's very, very well written. Um, yeah, it's definitely my favourite out of, out of his books. 
couple of Kristen Hanna's books, um, read both of them, liked The Nightingale or loved The Nightingale um, and that's my favourite out of the two on there. Got some Joanne Harris, really really liked um, Chocolat, Paula Hawkins, I am a fan of hers, I know some people aren't. Um, I recently read uh, The Keeper of Lost Things and I really liked it, it's by Ruth Hogan. Um, I would definitely recommend that one, it's a good sort of like mystery, contemporary novel, it's quite short as well so um, doesn't take too long to read. I love Khalid um, Husseini's writing. Um, I'm trying to remember whether I like which one of those I like the best. I don't I don't think I have a ranking of those, but um they are very very good and he's got a new one coming out soon um which is I think some sort of a illustrated novel um perhaps aimed more at children than it is at adults, but I'm really looking forward to that coming out. Next shelf down uh, a few things on here. I read um Yellow Crocus um, in the early part of this year and really liked it. This is about the relationship between um, a black slave um, and wet nurse and a white baby um, and it's very good. It's uh, lacked a bit of finesse in the writing style at times. It's a self-published um, novel but um, I did really enjoy it and learnt an awful lot from it so I would recommend that one. Uh, we've got the Gilded Craig Cage Trilogy by Vic James. Uh, my husband's read all three of these and really enjoyed them. Uh, so if you're into fantasy, it might be something for you. Equally, he's read um, the Queen of the Tealing Trilogy and really likes that one as well. This one here, this is um, Bone by Bone by Bone by um, Tony Johnston. Um, this is, I think it's, oh, you would class it as YA, maybe it's middle grade. Um, this is about two boys who are friends and one of them is white and the other one's black and the white boy um, has been forbidden by his father to go and play with the black boy um, and it's about how that whole story plays out and it says on the front a powerful story of one boy's stand against racism and it is very powerful and something that I would definitely recommend uh, young people reading um, as well as older people as well. Um, my husband's recently been just started the, um, I think these are called the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. Again, um, fan, epic fantasy series, he's been quite enjoying those. Um, I mentioned on my channel uh, a while ago, this was my favourite out of the Women's Prize shortlist this year, When I Hit You by Mina Kandasamy. Really, really powerful story about domestic abuse. Uh, doesn't shy away from hitting you hard with it so um, yeah just be prepared for that. Next shelf down we've got a couple of decorations on here I actually bought these back from a wedding that I went to at the end of August um, they had like a, a sunflower theme for the wedding it was really really pretty and uh, we got to take the table names home so um, I don't know how you pronounce that and this is this is a character from some sort of TV show that the bride and groom really liked. I can't remember the name of the show off the top of my head. Um, I know some of you are going to be probably shouting at me now. Um, if you do know what it is, leave it in the comments down below. But um, yeah, each table was different characters' names from the show. Um, so that was really cool. I just really liked how pretty that was. So I brought that home and also brought home these. These were the table centres and they've got um, lights in there. So I thought that would look really nice on my Instagram pictures and on my shelf, so I brought that home as well. Um, what have we got on here? Uh, we've got a couple of Hannah Kent's books, um, my favourite of which is um, Burial Rites. It's about a, uh, the last woman to be executed in Iceland. And um, yeah, it was really, really, really well written, uh, really atmospheric. I didn't like the good people as much. Um, I, I thought it was still interesting, it didn't hold my attention yeah, as, as much at all as Burial Rights did. Um, I've got a very sort of battered copy of The Buddha of Suburbia by Hanif Qureshi, uh, which I did um, my dissertation on. I did it on this one, The Heart of Darkness and um, The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I was talking about post-colonialism. 
Um, I bet if I read it now, I'd be embarrassed by um, how badly it's written. Um, I could be wrong, but um, yeah, I think I probably would be a little bit embarrassed. Uh, but this is basically about a boy living in London in the, is it in that 70s or yeah in the 70s uh, so he lives in south london but he isn't white and it's just about his experience of trying to fit in basically it's a little bit weird at times um but i quite liked it um what a ya book that i really did like was girl in translation by jean kwok this is about um is she i can't remember Ooh, yeah she's moved from Hong Kong to New York with her mother and obviously her mother wants her to have a better life and things like that and she goes to school and then um, but as well as going to school she has to help her mum basically um, you know pay the rent effectively and it's about sort of like working in these what are effectively sweatshops in in New York um, and how terrible the conditions were and stuff like that and also trying to break out of that sort of thing uh, it's very very good um really eye-opening um i've talked about steve larson's books on my channel before um i lo actually love the millennium tri trilogy i remember when i first read it it took me a good 100 pages to get into the girl with the dragon tattoo there's some not technical stuff in there but um a lot of political stuff in there um that wasn't really draw drawing me in to begin with but once you get past that initial little chunk they're absolutely fabulous i have got rid of because obviously there's another writer i can't remember his name um that's continuing them on and i did buy the first one i think it's the girl with the, sp the spider's web or something like that i didn't like the writing style at all just i mean obviously it's not going to be the same as steve larson but i just thought yeah it just wasn't the same um so i dnf that one and i got rid of it in the end um obviously we've got a copy of oh to kill a mockingbird by harper lee um absolutely love this book really want to reread it again i've um i put it on my wish list on audible because uh, i heard somebody talk about um listening to it and it was very good so i will definitely do that haven't read to go set a watchman i've mentioned a few times on my channel that i'm a little bit scared of doing that um i don't know we'll see this is the last shelf that i'm going to show you for part one of the bookshelf tour it's the bottom shelf um, on the second bookcase uh, so a few things on there we've got the lies of Locke lamora series uh, which my husband has read and really really likes a um, couple of other favorites really liked um, life of pi by it's gonna there we go by um yeah martel um, I'm sure you will know what this is about. Um, if you haven't read the book and just seen the film, would recommend reading the book. Um, I did think it was very good. Um, obviously, we've got my uh, De Mario books on here. Uh, there's a little gap because Jamaica Inn, I put on my five-star predictions list. So I've got that in a separate pile um, to remind me to read them, basically. But I loved both uh, Rebecca and my cousin Rachel, so I would recommend both of those. Um, what else have we got on here? We've got the Shannon Maguire Every Heart of Doorway series. I've got the first two books in those. I missed the fact that the fourth book was being published. Um, yeah, when people started showing that, I was like, oh, okay, totally missed that then. So I have liked both of those um, in that series. Uh, so I would, would recommend giving those a go. The only thing I don't like about them is that they're hardbacks. They're quite short. And they're quite expensive to buy. I think they're something like 13 or 14 pounds to buy. Um, and you can't get them in, in like normal bookshops in the UK. I have to order them online. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe it's the, because it's a smaller publisher, it's Tor, isn't it? And maybe that's why, I don't really know. Uh, but there we go. Um, we've got a couple of other Stephanie Meyer books up here. Uh, the Host was very good. That's, um, I think, a I think it's alien invasion is it aliens invading human bodies i can't remember anyway um that was very good i haven't read the chemist um i pre-ordered that i've got like a um a first edition hardback of that and i still haven't got around to reading it so um 
There we go. So there we go guys, that was part one of my bookshelf tour. Uh, please look out, as I said, for part two, which will be up on my channel on Friday, where I'll be showing you the rest of my shelves in the reading room. As always guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.